Dave McMenamin, I start with you. Late at night, you're with LeBron that night. They won. What, what, what happened? Well, Oracle is connected to the Oakland Coliseum. And so we walked off the one court and back kind of through the cavernous hallways towards the Coliseum where they're having a portrait room. And I was asking him about the secret that he alluded to all postseason long. And he tells me that when I left Miami, several people within the Heat organization told me you're making the biggest mistake of your career. And so, you know, he never named uh, Riles. He never said Pat Riley was the guy, but as we've pieced together the story over the years, uh, you know, Pat Riley was someone giving him motivation basically in terms of he wanted to prove him wrong, and boy did he prove everybody wrong by coming back from 3-1 in the process. Brian, you've known LeBron going back to when he was a very young man, and to hear him reflect on what that moment represented, how does that resonate with you? You know, he had taken a gamble, like Dave alluded to. He had taken a gamble. He'd really put his neck on the line, saying and believing he could do it again with another team, and it, and it happened. He, you know, he hit the triple seven, and that night was the culmination of the greatest week of LeBron's career because when you look at games five, six, and seven, those three games in a row are up there with the greatest performance you'll ever see in any basketball at any level. And then the fact that he did it, you know, serendipitously for his, you know, hometown, right. coming back and completing, you know, that, that circle. And put that all together, and you can understand why that moment stands alone as one of the great moments in sports we've seen in the last decade. I don't know the guy, but I'll tell you this. Um, the night he came on this show, he walked in with a cigar, with his children. It was Father's Day. He sat down, and he was as good fellas as any athlete that I've ever interviewed just because there was such a raw and authentic sense of both joy and I, I sense relief. Dave, how, if you were to kind of weigh the two, like, he did take that gamble. Like, how much of it is relief and how much of it is joy in your estimation? There was so much pressure from really the moment he got back to Cleveland in the right. fall of 2014. That's when I moved from Los Angeles to, to Cleveland to cover that story. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, this behemoth emerges in the Warriors to go for 73 <laughs> wins. And it was like, they're, they're all the way back there. They're back in the finals. This is LeBron's chance to, you know, redeem Cleveland 52 years without a championship. And, oh, you run into the Warriors down 3-1, it's all over. It's kaput. But rather than say it's over, he rallied those guys, a famous story. After they lose game four at home, he tells the team, hey, if you're not one. getting on, if you don't think we're coming back here to play a game six, don't get on the plane with me to go play game five. Whose idea was it to write the book, Brian? <laughs> we started, well, we started, to, we started, it really started it that night. Dave and I literally worked until dawn uh, through the night there. And so much was happening, um, you know, after the game. I mean, uh, Kyrie Irving is FaceTiming Kobe Bryant. You've got Tyron Lue, who's taken $100 from every single player, a Doc Rivers move, after they won game five and said, listen, we're putting this money in the ceiling, and after we come back here and win game six and seven, we're taking this money back. He had climbed up, you know, with the cigar, with champagne-soaked suit, climbed up on the desk and retrieved the, the money um, out of the ceiling. Um, you had guys smoking cigars, as you mentioned, the, the, the security guards at Oracle Arena begging them to put them out because you can't smoke inside in California. I, and I um, you could all of night. those things were going on. And <laughs> what was going on after that game was, a, was almost a book within itself. That's what you strive for in pro sports is to touch greatness. And um, the Warriors had touched greatness that whole year, and the Cavs touched greatness three times in a row there to get them. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.